coach Mike Valala. Coach, good morning to you. Hi, good morning, Mike. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for hopping on. So let's jump right into it. I mean, this is really cool. You team up with Millville, and you guys take a trip up to Cooperstown to the Hall of Fame, and you get to play a game on Double Day Field. And let's start with the joint aspect of this first. You know, we've heard of teams going up there. Uh, I've never heard of two teams sort of collaborating, putting it together, and going up together. What sort of organization did it take, and when did you guys decide that you should do this together along with Millville? Well, I, I guess it started, uh, I put the wheels in motion last year. Uh, we've been fortunate enough, uh, our, our Bulldog program has been fortunate enough to be invited to the uh, Coaches versus Cancer Tournament over at Millville, uh, thanks to Roy Hallenbeck, Mike Edwards, Kenny Williams, and, and Athletic Director Dave Lagamba. And we were over there last year, uh, our third year in it, and uh, Roy and I uh, you know, started tossing around the idea about playing a game up there, and and I, I think it might have been Roy actually who, who thought about the, who suggested the uh, joint effort. Uh, they had gone up there uh, about ten years ago and were snowed out. So I think they were still chomping at the bit to get uh, get a chance to play on Double Day Field. So uh, uh, we we started throwing ideas around, and and their AD Dave Lagamba was on board with it. Uh, you know, we needed to get approval from uh, the ADs and administration certainly. Uh, but once we uh, once we got the approval for it. Uh, I guess it was around June. Uh, you know, our building principal had signed off on it, went to the board of ed, and uh, and they were both on board with it. And and, and we thought that uh, not only saving expenses uh, by doing a joint effort, uh, but it'd be a great experience for the kids to bond. Uh, being that both schools are from Cumberland County, and we and we've had uh, you know some of the kids have played soccer and and baseball together growing up, and they know of each other. So we thought it'd be a great idea uh, to pull it off, and uh, it turned out. Uh, it, it, I think it was even better than we had planned. So let's let's talk about the trip itself. I mean, probably so many things to talk about. We'll start with the game, and you throw the score out the window. It doesn't really matter when you're playing on Double Day Field. Looking at your kids, that experience, you know, kind of the look in their eyes. What was that like for you as a coach? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, we uh, our, our game wasn't until 10 a.m. and we uh, both teams we left the hotel together around uh, 8:45 and got into uh into double day field around 855 it was only about a five or ten minute ride and uh w- you know we took a lot of pictures outside the stadium before we went in uh we were briefed on the rules before we went in the stadium uh i think one of the things that threw the kids for a loop at least my guys uh they have uh, some strict policies as far as double day field uh the kids are not allowed to choose sunflower seeds in the dugout uh, so they, uh, they they really have some tight regulations about playing on their field because it, it is an historic field and a historic complex. And uh, you know, going in there, we wanted to uh, treat it with a lot of respect and reverence. Um, but we were able to uh, uh, take the field around 9:30. We got into the stadium, and uh, the kids warmed up. Got to throw off bullpen mound, uh, both starting pitchers, and uh, kids warmed up. We didn't get to take I/O because of the time factor. Um, but uh, once we got out there, there were a lot of pictures being taken before and after the game. Um, so that that was exciting. It was a it was a neat thing for the kids. Uh, you know, everything but the game, at least at least on our part. Just playing in that venue, and I know you're obviously a big baseball guy, and and one of the things you're sort of preaching to your kids this year is respecting the game, respecting the rules of it, the history of it. Uh, how neat was it for you and your coaching staff and the Millville coaching staff? I mean, you know, adults still get geeked out about that kind of stuff too, right? Oh yeah, I mean, uh, d- just to think about it, when when you're in the dugout and you're on the field, you're in the batter's box before the game, uh, you're on the pitcher's mound talking to a pitcher. You think about all the people that have come there before you. Uh, you know, you think Double Day Field hosted the Hall of Fame game uh, for I think it was almost 70 years from the mid 30s to uh, 2008, I believe it was last year. So you think about all the people that have been there. Uh, you know, Mickey Mantle and, and a list of. Hall of Famers up and down, and you really are wowed. I mean, even though there's only you know 40 or 50 people in the stands at the time you're playing, it's still a pretty impressive uh, feeling to get when when you're in that dugout. And speaking of the dugouts, the dugouts were, I mean, they barely contained our our team of 16 players. I don't know how uh, uh, a squad of 25 MLB players would fit in those dugouts or uh, or be able to 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 experience the lack of uh, amenities in there compared to current day ball players, but. It was uh, it was a great experience for us. 
almost like playing at Wrigley, right, where the, there's no hot water sometimes and, and you're cramped <laughs> well, in there. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we didn't have any water out of the water fountains in the dugout, so I think hot water would have been better than no water. <laughs> <laughs> Catching up right now with Mike Valella, head coach of the Bridgeton Bulldogs baseball program. Bridgeton uh, joining forces with Millville this past week to take a trip up to Cooperstown, getting to play on Double Day Field. And, you know, Mike, the other part of this is you get to, to tour the Hall of Fame there, and I saw at least Roy Hallenbeck tweeting out some pictures of some Mike Trout gear, which is sort of surreal. I mean, you know, I guess in the back of my mind, I knew that stuff was up there, but how cool was that to see that? I know you're on the Bridgeton side of it, not the Millville side of it, but here's a guy who just played down here. We all know his name, but he's already got some gear up there at the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah, it's just, uh, it, it's it's still, and I know Roy and, and Kenny and Mike, they they uh, they still can't get over it, but um, and I, 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 uh, I, when, when you see it there and you see the, his spikes and his, uh, his hat from the from the All Star Game, and and you believe you, you still can't get yourself past the fact that he's from uh, Little Old Millville, uh, Cumberland County, New Jersey. Uh, and then to, I mean, it, it was it was special for uh, Jeff Meeks and I, my assistant, to uh, to be able to go through the Hall of Fame with the Millville staff who who coached uh, coached Mike for for those four years. It was special to to see uh, to see how they reacted, and, and uh, you know, you, 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 like you said, you hear things uh you know in the newspaper or or on television that his his item is up in cooperstown you know you don't really think a big deal about it until you get there and you see the artifact and then you see uh you know roy halliday's jersey from his no hitter and you see uh bats that babe ruth swung and you know mickey mantle's jersey and you're like wow this is really happening uh his stuff is here so uh to see those relics was uh was very cool and then even the bus ride home, you know, it's it sort of tied in with the theme up there. You know, tell our listeners what you coaches had your kids watch on the ride home. Yeah, well, uh, it, it actually started on the way up. Uh, okay. And it, it, and it was funny because uh, the uh, the bus company picked uh, Millville up first, and then they swung over to Bridgeton and, and picked us up. And the kids were, uh, for about an hour, hour and a half, there wasn't a whole lot going on. They were kind of to themselves. And then something happened, something clicked in where – hey, we're going to be on this bus for over 10 hours with these guys to and fro, so we better start making friends. And they started talking up a storm, and, uh, you know, once we got to our first rest stop, they, it was, you couldn't even stop them from talking. And, and they, uh, they were intermixing well. They were eating together at the restaurant, and, you know, a couple Milvo kids, a couple Bridgeton kids. And we, uh, during the trip on the way up and back, we had, I think we watched five different movies. Uh, we started out with 42, so... Uh, that was neat to see uh, the Jackie Robinson story. Many of them had not seen that. Uh, and then we watched uh, we watched The Natural. We watched Field of Dreams, um, which is always a tearjerker for uh, for even some of the adults on the bus. I'll leave it at that. Yeah, I can and, uh, uh, I can agree with that. Sure, <laughs> certainly. And then uh, I guess we also got to see uh, uh, Major League. The kids got a kick out of that. So I think we saw uh, and the rookie, uh, the uh, Jim Marsh story. So that was uh it was neat to get it was it was baseball uh, you know twenty four seven for those two days and uh you know I, I I hope the kids got something out of it and maybe if they don't appreciate it now maybe uh you know five or ten years from now when they uh, grow a little older they'll uh, they'll they'll experience it They're, they'll feel even better about the experience that they had. Checking in right now with Bridgeton head baseball coach Mike Valella. Uh, coach, I feel like, you know, I, I talk to a lot of you guys on different platforms. I do a lot of work for SNJ today out there. So I feel like I'm having the same conversation twice. It's almost going through that ESPN wash, car wash they talk about. But I want to ask you again uh, for the listeners of this show that maybe didn't, didn't see the news report we put together for SNJ today. Uh, you know, you've been at this a long time. Bridgeton historically was a good baseball program in the last few decades it's, it's fallen on some hard times and i know there's some frustration involved with coaching a team that maybe wins just one two three games a year but you know in seeing you do it you always sort of take it in stride and try to focus on the positives and you know how much enjoyment do you get out of this i know you love teaching the game to the guys i know you know respect the 90 is, is one of your themes this year but do you still have that same level of enthusiasm you have now as you did what 11 12 years ago yeah, I mean, I think uh, I think my first two years uh, we had won eight games uh, in each each of those first two years, and we were you know close to making a playoff run both those seasons. But uh, like you said, the uh, times have changed with uh, school choice and and just the fact that uh, a lot of inner city kids are, aren't playing baseball much anymore. Um, it's been a tough go of it as of the last uh, eight or nine years. 
Um, we have two wins this year, we're fortunate, and that's more wins than we've had in the last three years. So uh, we're, we're thankful for that. But it's, uh, it's very difficult, and, and I, I know I spoke to you before about it, saying I, I don't know how many people, uh, other coaches, would be able to do it. But it's, it, it's something that, as, as a coaching staff, we feel that uh, we owe the game because the, uh, the game has given, has given me and, and Jeff Meeks a lot in, in, over the course of our lifetimes. And, and we want to give back to these kids uh, the same way that uh, we were given when we were younger, and we realized that that um, we may not go 25 and 0 or, or 25 and 1 uh, every year, and we probably won't. And and you know, at, we, at some point you have to to look at it too. And Roy Hallenbeck and I were talking about this. The kids that we're coaching are some of them are two or three years removed from little league baseball, uh, being 15 years old. And if, if it, we we don't want to get ourselves wrapped up in and wins and losses so much as 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 just the teaching the game and, and teaching them how to respect the game and uh, pick each other's gloves up when the third out's made. Uh, put your helmet and bat back after you strike out. Uh, if you make an error, get the next play. Sprint on and off the field. Those are kind of the themes that we've been teaching our our kids over the last uh, four or five years. Even more so because we haven't been able to been be uh, as successful on the field. So. Um, if we continue to do that, you know, we feel a lot of satisfaction about it. At the same time, we're not, we're not, uh, we're not resigned to the fact we're going to be losing a lot of games, but we take the diamond every, every day as if uh, we're going to be Millville High School or we're going to be uh, Abuna High School and we're going to have a, a top 20 team each year, and, and that's how we approach every season. So that's kind of where that Respect 90 theme came into play this year. All right, head coach Mike Valella of the Bridgeton Bulldogs. Great stuff. Really enjoyed hearing about your trip, and uh, best of luck to you and your kids the rest of the way. We'll catch up again soon. You got it, Mike. Thanks for having us on. All right, you got it. Mike Valella, head coach of the Bridgeton Bulldogs.